There is an epidemic sweeping through the older gay community. It's not AIDS and it's not COVID. We've been through those. Yet this epidemic is far more powerful and it's affecting so many more of us. It is the epidemic of loneliness. Welcome to No Two Gays About It, the show for the over 50 gay male, hosted by two well over 50 gay men, and all about the things that are important to those of us who are over 50. Hi, I'm Tom Burke. And I'm Michael Foley. And today it's time for a real talk about loneliness. We're going to explore why this is happening to gay men our age and how loneliness manifests itself. We'll also discuss what we mature gay men can do to combat this problem and the pitfalls to be wary of. And finally, we're going to face the fact that loneliness starts with us first. It's a me problem. And we'll take a look at ways to nurture ourselves and be less lonely in our own skin. So join us for the conversation as we take on loneliness. All right, Michael, loneliness. It's a really big problem, especially for guys like us. Yeah, it's a, it's a huge problem um, as, as we age, I think, because, you know, our, I think our natural instinct is after all those wounds and hurts we have is just to sort of isolate. And uh, we really have to fight that on a daily basis. But, you know, the, the problem is that it's not just a like, oh, boo-hoo, I'm so lonely feeling. Loneliness can really wreak havoc on a body, you know? Um, you know that stress hormone cortisol that is killing people who are living these really high-stress lives? That's the same thing that is coursing through our bodies when we are feeling loneliness. And I just want to read a couple uh, things that are happening when that is, you know, when we are feeling lonely. Cortisol can impair cognitive performance, it can compromise the immune system, and it can increase risk for vascular problems, inflammation, heart disease, and it's also a huge factor in more serious mental health problems such as depression and anxiety. So like I said, it's not just a, oh, I feel lonely. This is doing some real damage to people. Yeah, there's, there's a, you know, there's, as with everything else in our lives, there's, there's, there are chemicals that course through our body that uh, affect everything. It's a domino effect that our health, our physical well being. It, it's, it's just to be aware of that is, it helps immensely when you're in the midst of that loneliness or you feel yourself spiraling down into a depression. We just right. have to be aware of the chemicals that are coursing through our body, just like, you know, when we're happy and, you know, the endorphins are running and it, you, sure. there, there's a physical change that happens. So why do you think this epidemic of loneliness is affecting so many older gay men? Oh, yeah, that's a very layered question. Um, it is? You know, it's funny. When I find myself going to places like that, there's... Um, there's a lot of nostalgia that comes up with me too, because there are so many friends who I lost in the eighties and nineties who are no longer here. Right. Um, and, and that compounds the issue. And it's, you know, it, they're not here because of a society that turned a blind eye to our Holocaust. Um, and that always brings me to a, a, a darker place. So, um, well, definitely the whole idea of loss um, brings on loneliness. And yes, we lost a huge amount of our community uh, during the age epidemic. But as we're aging, loss is happening more and more. You know, right. uh, a lot of men are losing their spouses. A lot of men are losing their partners. We're losing friends, you know, a really important friend group that, you know, we created our families out of. So loss definitely is bringing about uh, a whole feeling of loneliness. But that's not all, though. I mean, there are so many other reasons why we as a community are feeling this. And one of the things we just mentioned, family, we don't all have that. You know, so many people as they're aging, they go back home, they go back to their families, they they are with their families, but so many of us, we don't have that, you right. know? Um, yeah, biological. I think that's why, um, 
you know, as, as we get older, it's more important to maintain and cultivate our sort of chosen families and to make sure that those are thriving as well, because it does help with that feeling of loneliness. Well, I mean, it definitely does, but it doesn't take away the fact that so many of us can't go back home. So many right. of people in our community were shunned by their families or, you know, their families turned their backs on them, so they had to leave. But I know for myself, um, although I have really, you know, good relationships with my my family members, but even like at holidays, I will sit and think like, oh, my family's all getting together now, or I wonder what they're all doing now. And just those thoughts alone start bringing on that loneliness feeling of like, well, I'm not with them, and I or I can't be with them. And Again, so many people our age and older can't travel anymore, so they can't go to be with their families. And so the the loss not only of people important to us, but then the loss of family, again, another huge factor in why loneliness is just careening through our community. Um, yeah, and you think as we you think you would think as we got older that it would be easier to deal with loss, but I know for me, it seems to be harder every time yeah. I experience it, which, um, you know, makes you, again, it just makes you want to shut down, which unfortunately compounds the loneliness epidemic that we are facing. Oh, so definitely. Um, there was something, though, that I read, of course, you know me, I love reading, I love doing all my research and stuff. I found this, one of the reasons why this is affecting our community is because a lot of our community doesn't want to seek help. In fact, I'm reading this to you, uh, four-fifths of older gay men do not trust professionals to understand their culture or their lifestyle, and for those reasons, choose not to seek any sort of help during a loneliness, you know, whatever is happening. Yikes. I mean, it makes perfect sense because think about it. You know, if, if we're lucky we live in or near large cities right. where there's a large gay population. But if you're in the middle of the country or in some place that, you know, there isn't a thriving gay community and you're in your 50s or 60s and you're, you're going through depression, that going to a heterosexual who grew up in that area and has no familiarity with our community or how we operate or what we deal with on a daily basis or the things that we have gone through at our age, um, they're clueless. And, you know, there is still so much bigotry out there that, um, oh, totally. you know, finding a, a fit would be a huge challenge if you're in Oklahoma or if you're in Mississippi. Um, and so what does that do? It makes you want to shut down even more. And it, you know, right. the loneliness becomes even that much more intense. Yeah. I mean, when I, I was going through an issue years ago and I wanted to talk to a therapist, I, living in Los Angeles, could easily find a gay therapist. I wanted a gay guy who would understand. So you don't have to do all that extra explaining or right. whatever, you know. But, you know, luckily now, and we're going to talk more about this later, um, but luckily now, ever since COVID, you know, the world is connected yep. through Zoom, connected Absolutely. through, you know, the computers. So you can find that gay therapist yeah. online. If so, you're in Oklahoma, you could actually, you know, call the Gay and Lesbian Center in Los Angeles and ask them to right. recommend. And then you set up Zoom meetings with the, right. with the person. So yeah, keep, that exactly. keep your mind open to that because talking helps. No kidding. Um, and that's something, another reason why this is happening to our community, because so many men our age and especially older are so afraid of being vulnerable or exposing emotions. I know, you know, especially males that are older than us, um, that whole thing of like, you, you never show your emotions. Yes. Yeah. Uh, oh, don't cry. You're a sissy. Yeah. You know, oh, you're a little... Right. You're a little why are you crying? What, you know, buck up, you know, all, all that stuff that was banged into our heads right. really has left scars. And I think that's one of the reasons it's important to have conversations with other people is because you're able to sort of excavate that right. and, and get to the core of like, 
why that hole or that void in you can't be filled because there there are deep wounds there there is uh one place that a lot of older people not just gay people you know a lot of straight people uh a place where they find comfort when they're feeling these loneliness or when they need to talk to someone and that's going to their churches their religions um you know they do find a lot of comfort in you know, even if it's just like one day a week, every Sunday, they get together, there are all these people. And if they do have these problems, they're talking to their preachers or their priests or whoever, you know, rabbi or whoever it is. But for a lot of us in the gay community, that whole religious thing was, that door shut. Yeah, it's a non-starter because, you know, from the time we were very young, we were told that who we were at our core was wrong, is wrong. or sinful or evil, right. and we had to be fixed. And right. again, those that's the, the, those are the scars that I'm referring to. There's so much. There's always something deeper when you're experiencing loneliness, or you know, spiraling down into that depression. There's always something deeper to look at than what you think it may be on the surface. Um, right. And again. Can't stress enough. That's why talking about it is so helpful. And I, I understand the resistance, you know, with guys our age, because that wasn't the norm. If you were right. a guy, you were supposed to suck it up and be strong. And, you know, yeah. it, it, it such a, a horrible way for us to have been raised because um, so much got buried. Right. Exactly. And, and then for now to be, you know, in your 70s, like, oh, now I'm going to start talking about myself. It doesn't, no. it just doesn't happen that easily. No. And, you know, finding that person to actually talk to, like we said, the, the religious door has been shut, the family has been shut, the, you know, exposing ourselves, going to find help with therapists, all of these doors, we're shutting ourselves, so that we are just kind of sitting in this world of loneliness. And as I mentioned in the beginning, it's killing us. Yeah, It's killing literally. our bodies. Yeah, literally. 2023, um, since they've been keeping records on suicides in this country, um, was the highest recorded number of suicides um, in the United States. And so it is literally killing us. And we have to figure out a way to save ourselves. Okay, Michael. So we have figured out what loneliness is doing to our bodies, basically killing it. We've also figured out why this is careening through our community um, and why so many men our age and older are not really seeking help. So now we have to go to the next question, which is, what can we do? What can we do about this? to combat what's happening. Well, I'm going to grab the first thing that screams to me. Okay. And that would be get off of social media and create real connections. The worrying about getting likes on a post or the, you know, just that separation that happens when we pick up our phones. Right. Or we sit down at our computer and we wind up in, you know, three hours later in that YouTube black hole because we've just watched 17,000 kitty videos um, and we've done nothing to enrich or enhance our mental well-being that I think get off of social media, pick up a phone, don't text, pick up a phone, call somebody, reach out, reach out in a really tangible way is to me what screams most when I'm feeling isolated is that, oh, I've just spent three hours looking at my phone and uh, of course I feel lonely. Yeah, but sometimes when you're in that loneliness and you're spiraling down, picking up the phone and calling someone is not really what you want to do. And that's probably when we need to do it the most. Yeah. You know, we've we've talked a lot about on this show about challenging ourselves sure. to to push beyond what is comfortable and what we're used to doing and if you are experiencing that loneliness, then get out, go for a walk, get your headspace clearer, and pick up the phone. Because now, you know, if you if you leave your house and you go for a two mile walk, you could be on the phone now talking to somebody. Right. I actually had a friend of mine from LA call me at 1.30 in the morning because he was experiencing some really dark stuff. Okay, that's great. And 
he had got out of his house. He was out on a walk, called me on the phone, and we talked for almost two hours. Okay, great. So, you know, we do have to push past our sort of comfortability levels yeah. and, and, and challenge ourselves to get the fuck out of it. Right. I mean, one thing you did say about, you know, getting off of social media, social media is also making us all feel so bad about ourselves. You know, um, we have to like know that if these people are posting like, look at me, I'm having this great life. I'm having so much fun. I have all these friends. I'm always going out. That's making a lot of people feel really lonely because they don't have that life, you know, but I always kind of wonder about those people who are always posting yeah. about how happy they are. Because nobody's nobody's living their best life 100% of the time. And, yeah. you know, that image that we want to portray, which again is such a, it's, it is, it is our generation. We always, you, you wanted things to look great on the surface. Right. So that everybody would think you got your shit together. And the reality is nobody really has all their shit together oh my all God. the time. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so when you are looking at social media and seeing these pictures of, you know, all these people out to dinner and they're all smiling and they're all happy, it, it, you're, you're experiencing a very brief moment and nobody's posting online, I'm feeling like shit today and a picture of themselves hiding under the covers because you're just not. <laughs> so right. maybe, maybe we should. And, you know other people would reach out to you or somebody may pick up the phone and call you who is a friend of yours and say, what's going on? Tell me. I just don't see that actually happening. Uh, anybody posting like I'm having such a bad day. Um, but I think we just have to, just with as with everything, like don't compare yourself to somebody else. You know, maybe someone is out to having dinner with friends and celebrating someone's birthday, but you can't compare yourself to that person. You know, um, get off social media for, for one thing, especially if you are feeling lonely, don't look at other people having good lives. Yeah. Social media is a sort of cesspool, unfortunately. And it does, it does, it, you know, there's all these hearings going on, on, on Capitol Hill about how, you know, young kids are depressed right. and committing suicide at record numbers because they're on social media all the time. It makes you feel bad. That's the purpose of social media. And then it provides you with yeah. advertisement or you know, paid for solutions that really aren't going to work because you're perpetuating it by staying on social media. Right. So get off social media, <laughs> please. Although, you know, there, there are plenty of really good things that do happen through social Absolutely. media. We, we have the absolute best guys that are watching and listening to us and letting us know about their lives and what's happening in their lives. And a number of guys have said how they have met some really close friendships online, you know, that they have formed these really great bonds. So it is a way, especially if you are isolated, if you are in some small town that doesn't have a lot of gay people and you are feeling totally lonely, your your way to find that those connections is through social media, right? Because so, there are community pages specifically for the gay and lesbian um, and trans right. communities. So if you are in Mississippi or Oklahoma or Utah and you're feeling lonely, Google Los Angeles, you know, Facebook pages, gay Facebook pages, right. and and it'll 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 connect you to other people. You know, um, I. Uh, have been volunteering at the food bank, which is part of the, the Gay and Lesbian Center here where we live. And every week, it's the nicest group of guys that are showing up, and women that are showing up to, you know, just volunteer their time. And it's such a lovely way to make these connections and, and get out and talk to people. So uh, one thing that I, I really always suggest to everybody out there that you know, if you do feel isolated, if you do feel alone, get out and start volunteering. You know, find those people who are like you, who are kind and, you know, not on social media showing how amazing their lives are, but they're actually trying to help other people. And even if it's just, you know, a few hours a week, you're connecting with people. And you're also um, getting out of your own head, right? Yeah. You know, you're, 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 right. making, you're ma making connections to another living human being. 
And that's so important to help in those moments. And I'm also going to stress to folks out there who are going through this, please don't get down on yourself. Everybody has shitty days and it has to be okay. If you're, you know, angry or you're upset, don't get down on yourself because then that makes things worse. Allow yourself to be angry and upset, but try to figure out why and to move beyond it. Because we all have shitty days. We all have days where I don't want to talk to people or I may react in a way that wasn't the, necessarily the, the healthiest for a given situation. But, you know, we've talked before about giving yourself grace in those moments, saying it's okay if I have to right. make amends to somebody because I was a colossal dick, then I want to do that. But just to give yourself a little bit of breathing room and not get down on yourself because that only makes the downward spiral even worse. Right. Um, and especially if you are in that loneliness, you're feeling like you're the only person in the world, you have nobody else out there, you know, all of that, that spiral to then connect. And as I was saying, you know, that I have been going and volunteering, which is connecting me to other people, which is great. Yeah. But there are a lot of guys our age and older who can't get out anymore, who have health issues and they cannot go out and meet people. Or, and they are kind of stuck in their homes or stuck in, you know, their community or whatever. So you said something too, like if you're in Oklahoma, you can Google LA Center. Well, I went to our center and I asked them because since COVID, they have so many classes and meetings all online, all right. through Zoom or all online. And I said, can someone from, you know, we actually had a, a listener who wrote to us from Tanzania, Tanz, what was it? Tan Tasmania. Ten Tanzania. <laughs> Tanzania. Just remember the devil. Tanzania. T T oh, yeah. The, yeah. Which is that, you know, it's ironic. That's funny because it is, that's, that, that's the devil, the loneliness and right. the isolation. Yeah. But he was saying yeah. that he is very isolated there. It's not a big gay community. So I asked, like, well, can someone from a different country, from a different city, you know, join in on some of these classes and they're like of course they absolutely. can absolutely yep. you know so that's a really a great plus that has happened since covid kind of destroyed our country for a while but or our, our world but um yeah so maybe you can't get out to meet people but you can connect to a whole bunch of other gay people who are there's there's a um i know our center has this great thing for senior gay men, senior gay lesbians, seen, you know, uh, so connect with these people. And they, and as you were said in the very beginning about just communicating, just yeah. talking, to just be able to say, like, I feel so lonely to have someone else go, so do I. Like, all of a sudden... we really are all going through the same shit. Yeah. And then and you, you feel validated and you don't feel so alone. Someone yeah. else is going through this as well. And also allowing somebody to say when you, you know, I'm here for you. Right. Um, it, is, is, it just, it makes all of the difference in the world just to have that, hear a voice that says, I get it and I'm here. Totally. You know. And, you know, something else that's really important to, to discuss about this loneliness epidemic, as you said, it's happening to everybody. And whether you are a single guy like you or a married guy like me in a relationship, we all feel loneliness. You know, I am ha I'm very fortunate to have this other guy with me, so I don't feel alone. But it doesn't mean that I don't feel loneliness. Right. You know, there's a big difference between being alone and being lonely. And being lonely. Right. I mean, yeah. again... I think some of my... Yeah, it, it, it is hard... Um, and this, I guess especially how long you guys have been together, that uh, experiencing moments of loneliness has to be okay with you guys too, right? Right, yeah. Well, even, you know, we've talked about this a lot, that we have moved to a new city. And so our, real, our friend groups and our, like, the people that were so close to me that I could see every day, that I would meet for lunch, and we would just, you know, blah, 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 just vomit out all kinds of whatever you want to talk about. Those people aren't around me anymore. Sure, my husband's there. We're sitting there watching TV. We're cuddling. He's right there next to me. But I can still feel those pangs of, oh, I'm so alone. You know, I'm lonely yeah. or whatever. So um, it affects. Yeah, because somebody can't fill somebody can't fill you up a hundred percent of the time, right? 
you that's I mean, that's the biggest thing about relationships. You can't get everything from just this one person. You can't. Right. And if you expect that, it's not going to work out, you know? And it's, it's not fair to the other person. Oh either. my God, no. Yeah. yeah. I don't want to be everything for my husband. I mean, of course I'm everything for my husband, but <laughs> I don't want to have to fill everything, you know, his needs. He right. has his work friends and his whatever friends and his family members, you know, his family members that are my family members too. But, you know, we have to find different things from different people. Um, so yeah, it happens. Yeah, and to that's all of that us. probably is a good thing to remind you know couples. Is what you just said that sometimes in a relationship, you experience loneliness even though someone is in the room with you sitting there. That it's it is okay to feel those feelings. Yeah, you know, and and, uh, re- and know remind that, the married folks out there that yeah, it's okay. And he's feeling it too. You know, there are times that he, I'm sure he's feeling those things as well. It's in those relationships, those really controlling relationships we've all seen on Lifetime movies where, you know, the husband won't let the woman talk to anybody else and he's making her not, you know, she can't deal with her own family anymore and he has to be everything for her. We've all seen how that works out, you know, so we do have to connect to all different types of people on all different levels, but just important to know that it affects everybody. This yeah. loneliness thing is affecting everyone, which is why it is this epidemic. Yeah, and our Surgeon General, you know, came out th- three or four months ago and said there is a major epidemic in this country, and it's loneliness. He named it. Yeah. So, again, everybody is going through this. And I know for me, some of the loneliest times I've ever experienced in my life, I was in a room full of people. And exactly. Instead of beating myself up, I always try to figure out, maybe not in the moment, and sometimes it's hard to get to this place where I try to figure out what the f- else is going on here. Right. Because I'm experiencing this crazy that, you know, I used to beat myself up about and feel shame for, but I don't anymore because, again, I have amazing people in my life who, I, who, who push me to open up and... I will, I will be eternally grateful for that. And I try to do that to other people too. If I see somebody who is, you know, is having a challenging time, I try to, I try to sort of work my way in there. And I think that's important for us to remember too, because it helps us get out of that cycle of loneliness when we reach out to somebody else. Say, hey, oh, what are you going through? Exactly. I mean, that's the thing that we have to be there for each other. Religion's not there for us. Our families aren't there for us. You know, all those doors that have closed that we we have to be there for each other within this community yeah. to stop this horrible loneliness epidemic from killing people. What we now have to talk about is something that's really important uh, concerning this whole loneliness epidemic. And that is that it really starts with us. This is a me problem. You know, so many people in life want to always put the blame on someone else. I'm lonely because my family doesn't like me anymore. I'm lonely because religion won't let me be. And, you know, I'm lonely because of it's everybody else's problem. And it's not. It all starts here, right here, you know, with me. And we have to face that fact that whether you like it or not, this loneliness spiral that you're falling into you did it yourself. You put yourself there, you know? Um, not, I, I would have to, absolutely, we are responsible for our own feelings. But there are sometimes, you know, my Angelou used to say that life can be like a flock of ducks just pecking away at little pieces of you. And it, you know, one takes a flange of your ear, the other one takes a part of your heart. The other, that life also pushes us to those places. Um, and our challenge becomes, still standing strong in our own space and despite being pecked away at allow ourselves to move beyond it Um, yeah i i totally get that but you can either be like oh these ducks are you know pecking away at me or like get the off me duck you know take control of yourself you can't put the blame onto yeah life's gonna be pecking at all of us 
Right. Always. And that's why I said taking responsibility yeah. for our feelings is a huge part. But sometimes in a moment when you're experiencing those feelings, you don't have the wherewithal to go, oh, well, this is me. No. I want to move on. No. And that's where allowing yourself the grace I to totally, experience it, yeah, right? I totally get that. In okay. the moment, you can't. Yeah. But, you, just, yeah. you know, these are all waves. They come and go. And so that loneliness spiral that you're in will eventually ebb and you will, you know, be okay for that. It's in those moments that we have to say, yeah, I have to do something about this. Right. I can't what do, blame. What do I have to figure out? Yeah, yeah. I can't blame other people. I can't, you know, what can I do? And that is getting, you know, putting ourselves forward and saying, I have to take control. I have to feel uncomfortable. I have to make that first call to the center in New York City, even though I live in Arkansas or whatever it is. We have to take that control back. Otherwise, this loneliness spiral will just take us through this whole epidemic with everyone else. Do you remember the movie Gravity? So funny, this image just flashed through my head because I haven't thought about it forever. Okay. But it, it, when Sandra Bullock lands back on the earth and there's that moment of her being stuck to the ground because she just came from space and couldn't feel gravity out there, and it took her a moment to stand back up, that, that, that's, that's us in those moments where we're floating out in space and we feel lost and separate and can't get our feet on the ground. And then there's that one final moment where you crash to the earth and yep, it's really hard to get back up. But you do, you get your footing and, and you're able to stand again. And I think, like I said, we go, we go back to grace. It's, it's so important to allow yourself to feel that crap, but it's also on you to stand back up. Oh, totally. I think that was one of the biggest things I learned when I did go to therapy where, you know, when, because I always worry, 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 worry. That was like my big thing. And my therapist was like, you just have to take that moment to go like, eh, there I go. Yeah. You know, I worry. Okay, great. Let's move on. What can we do now instead of going through that spiral? So yeah. let me ask you, um, as a single guy out there uh, who I know battles loneliness as well, just like everybody else, what is a way that we individuals can learn how to be comfortable alone? This wonderful book came into my life way back in the 90s called The Artist's Way. And sure, it suggests, I know that. you remember that? Yeah. It suggested this one thing that I still do to this day, which was very hard. And that was, was called an artist date. And that was taking yourself out once a week to make a commitment and to be alone with yourself, to go out to dinner by yourself, go to a movie by yourself. And it was so hard at the beginning, right? Um, and now it's something that's become part of my life and it, it makes it easier for me to be by myself. I don't always feel like, oh, I have to be out and doing something. That sometimes sitting within yourself and just sort of enjoying your own company is, is, a, is a huge benefit to you, I think, in the long run and helping th you through that loneliness aspect. Because again, okay. you could be alone and you could be by yourself and be totally content. You don't, you know, it's, it, you're not feeling lonely. Right. Um, so give yourself some space and some time just to be with you. And don't always feel like you have to fill the quiet with something. Great. So, okay. So I understand about like taking yourself on a date, going out, doing something like that. But what if you are one of those gay men who has a health issue that really can't be going out? Is this something you can do within your own home as well? Oh, I think so. You know, take up a new hobby. Puzzles became huge during COVID sure. because people were experiencing loneliness. And this was something that was creative and it filled the your, your time and it made you think right. and, you know, solving a problem, it always provides you with this sense of accomplishment. Right. So take up a new hobby, learn how to knit, crochet, do puzzles, paint, do ceramics. There are a, a million things you can do. And you don't have to do them alone, actually, because like I said, you can join a class online. And you guys can be painting together. And, you know, I have a really good friend that during COVID, she learned how to bake. And so she would like, I think it was Thursday mornings or whatever, some morning. Um, and she was in New York and like all of our friend group would just get on and she would 
be baking for us and would watch That's her awesome. and like now I'm putting in this and now I'm doing this and we'd all be like oh that looks so good <laughs> and like oh this is so great and you didn't have to eat it it was just the experience of all of us being together watching her create yeah. this thing so yeah take up a new hobby do puzzles online like we're all going to yeah. do this 500 piece puzzle together and you do it at your home or whatever yeah, here's a great one too because I have a friend who still does this yeah she belongs to a book club and during COVID they found each other. They, they read a book and then they get together on zoom and they talk out the book. They commune with each other. And this is something that she loves so much and has become such a huge part of her life because you're connecting with people in a different way. Right. Exactly. And that is what we have to do when we are in a good space to go, God, I can't go through that loneliness feeling again take the control and be like, I need to do something. I can't blame someone else. I can't count on someone else to make me happy or make me feel unlonely. So I need to take that step, find those classes, find those friend groups that are out there and, you know, or connect through social media, like so many of our, the guys that are watching us um, are, are doing. Yeah. And then, yeah, set up a book club. How great is that? You don't have to leave your house, but you still get to connect with people. So many things that we can do before this epidemic takes us down, like it has been taking so many other yeah. people down, right? And just keep in mind that life is about baby steps. So again, allow yourself the space to have a challenging time with it when you first start. Right. That eventually you'll get your legs back and eventually, you know, being part of that book club once a month is something you look forward to. That uh, it, it just it just changes our our wiring. Sure, you know? and also about the wiring. Yes, it, just remind yourself about these baby steps. But also when it's happening, remind yourself like you're not mentally really doing this. Your body is doing this. That this that cortisol is going all through your body, making you feel all these horrible feelings. So, you know, you if you need to blame something, blame your body. It's you know it's taking you down, but just don't like let it take you all the way and know that this too will pass. Yeah. That's and what, negative thoughts perpetuate negative thoughts. Sure. And then that's what does create the chemical imbalance in your body. So yeah, give your, again, give yourself the space to, to be okay feeling shitty in a moment, but know that you have the ability to stand up and get out of it. Okay, so I'm going to ask you, uh, next time you start feeling these feelings of loneliness and you, that spiral starts happening, what are you going to do? Well, what time is it? Because we could schedule it in. <laughs> give, me, give me 10 minutes and I'll let you know. Um, this is what I do. I get off my ass. Good. I will go to the gym. I will get out of the house. I will go for a walk. Um, I will pick up a book. I, I, I do something because it's become, you know, they say after 30 days, you, something becomes a habit for you. Yeah. And it's just learning how to get through that, past that 30 days. And then you get the tools to know how, oh, sh I'm feeling shitty. And sometimes, you know what? Sometimes I allow myself to sit in it because there's other stuff I have to figure out. Mm -hmm. And I have allowed for that to be okay which again, I think is hugely important. Yeah. How, 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 do you, how do you get through your, let's say you're at home and Scott's there with you and you know, you've guys have had a great day and then he goes and sits on the couch and watches TV and you, all of a sudden these feelings come up where you're like, right. I, I know I shouldn't, but I feel really lonely right, right now. Yeah. What do you do? Uh, well, you know, I'm a big believer in, as you said, moving the body that kind of changes everything that's happening but also i would reach out to somebody i would be like you know what i'm going to call someone or send them a text or an email or something and just make a connection um and that's one of the things you said in the very beginning a very important thing is to just communicate and i'm not above saying calling someone or texting someone and saying like i am feeling so horribly lonely what are you doing today you know, that opens the door for someone else to come in and help you. And I think we as older gay men have to 
be okay with being vulnerable as well. Yeah, and it's funny, have you experienced this when you do that? And you're reaching out to somebody, it's almost like the universe saying, call this person because they're going through the same exact thing. Oh, totally. Yeah. And then they're like, oh my God, I am too. Yeah, let's do something. Yeah. Or just talk and that's it. Yeah. And then it's like, oh, okay, cool. Obviously, this epidemic of loneliness is not ending right away in our community, but we can all be on the lookout, not only for ourselves, but also looking out at other people because... We can see it in other people as well, you know. Um, don't let them stay home alone. Don't let yeah. them be alone. Don't let them not answer your texts when you know that they are spiraling, you know. Uh, it's up to us to watch out for each other and for ourselves. As you have said so many times and uh, so perfectly, we have to not only give grace to ourselves, but we have to give grace to others as well. Right. Um, so that's it. We're there. We're there for each other. And it's the only way that we can stop this epidemic from happening. Yeah. Even if it's your next door neighbor, just knock on their door and say, how you doing today? Right? How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? <laughs> awesome. All right. Cool. Brilliant. All right, everyone. I think that this is a good place for us to stop. Um, but keep a lookout for everybody. Connect to people. Get off social media watching other people, but then get on social media to connect with others. Join whatever group. Uh, cool. How do you feel? Lonely? Like I said, what time is it? Oh you know, God. again, it's waves. We have to, we do exactly. have to allow ourselves for it to be okay. Exactly. That um, it's going to happen. We're not alone. I think that's the most important thing we could, the gift we could give ourselves as we age is to remember we're not alone and to fight those feelings of, I just... I want to isolate. There you go. I just can't anymore because, you know, life gets heavy. The older you get, the heavier your life gets. You know, we've, we've been through a lot and we've experienced a lot of loss and it's okay. It's okay to feel crap. It's okay to feel grief. It's, it's, it's all good. Don't beat yourself up. Please don't beat yourself up and just reach out. Cool. Hey guys, we love making the show and we wouldn't be where we are without your support. So consider becoming a member of our Patreon today for as little as the cup. Okay, see, I just fucked up and it's going to be okay. <laughs> for as little as the cost of one cup of coffee a month, your membership fees go directly to keeping the show on air, as well as earning you exclusive access to bonus content and early access to our episode. And that's our way of saying thank you to you for the support. So please head over to patreon.com forward slash no two gays about it and join our found family today. And we also have a Facebook page. Um, if you are experiencing loneliness or separation um, and become a member of that because, you know, you'll, you'll, re you'll be able to reach out to other like-minded guys who might be able to give you some support on a day where you're just having a hard time. Um, so head over to Patreon and you could get information about that as well. And hey, become a member of our YouTube family because you'll get priority responses to questions you may have or issues you may be having. And if we could help you out, we would love to. And while you're there, click like and subscribe um, and ring the little bell because you'll get notifications when a new video drops. We also want to thank um, two of our uh, sponsors over at Patreon who are at the executive producer role. And that is Ted Zalewski. And Cesar Montero, thank you so much for your support, guys, and your belief in us. We appreciate it greatly. And hey, be sure to leave us a comment um, wherever it is you're listening to us, because we want to hear from you. We want to know, uh, how is this whole loneliness epidemic affecting you? Is it? And if it is, how, what are you doing to combat it? And please, wherever you're listening to us, give us a really good review, because not only does it let us know that the shows we're doing are shows that you're interested in, but it also gets us up and out there in the stratosphere so that other gay guys who may not have the community that you have, they'll also be able to find us. So in advance, thanks very much. Yeah, thank you. And if you guys have an idea for a show, you could reach us across social media at the moniker No Two Gays About It. And just remember, it's the number two. Um, and that's, again, cross social media. And you could also hit us up on Gmail at no2gaysaboutit on gmail.com. Fantastic. All right. 
Michael, this has been great. Thank you for sharing all of your wisdom about um, loneliness and also your experiences. It really helps us all to know that we're not we're not alone, that everybody's in the same boat with us. Um, yeah. So thanks again. And until next time, Michael. Until next time, Tom. Thank you guys for listening. We'll see you next week. Hey, thanks so much for watching. And don't forget to subscribe. And if you like what you saw, check out some of our other videos. Thank you.